Moving on to question two, we're being given that the Federal Reserve expands the money supply by 5%. In part A, we need to use the theory of liquidity preference to illustrate in a graph the impact of this policy on the interest rate. Well, um, following from uh, question one, we know that the theory of liquidity preference can be illustrated very vividly using the supply and demand graph in the money market. On the x-axis, we'll have the quantity of money M. On the y-axis, we have the interest rate R. The money demand curve will be downward sloping. And as always, the money supply curve will be vertical because it's fixed by the central bank. Here, since the Fed expands the money supply by 5%, this means that we have a rightward shift to the money supply curve from MS1 to MS2. And as a result, the initial interest rate R1 will decline and reach R2 right here. All right. In part B, we need to use the model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply to illustrate the impact of this change in the interest rate in back of the change in the interest rate on output and the price level in the short run. All right. Well, we know how to do that. Uh, we'll use the standard aggregate supply aggregate demand graph. On the x-axis, we have the quantity of output y. On the y-axis, we have the price level p. Uh, as always, the long run aggregate supply curve will be vertical and intersect the x-axis at the natural level of output y1. And the economy now is uh, initially operates at the aggregate demand curve AD1 and the aggregate supply curve AS1. So the economy is initially at point A. Now, since the Fed uh, expands the money supply and the equilibrium interest rate will decline, and as a result, households will increase their spending and invest more in new consumption goods, maybe invest in durable goods, or maybe even new housing. And on top of that, firms will also increase their investment spending. So as a result, the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right, and we go right here from AD1 to AD2. The aggregate supply curve is uh, unaffected in the short run, so the, econ the economy will operate at the new point B. And uh, wh what, is that, what does that mean? This means that we have a short-term fluctuation that results in a higher level felt with Y2, so the difference between Y1 and Y2 is the expansionary gap. The economy is experiencing a boom on point B. All right. Part C asks, when the economy makes a transition from a short-run equilibrium to its new long-run equilibrium, what will happen to the price level? Uh, also, I forgot to mention that at point B, not only the the output expands, but also the price level increases from P1 to P2. But now, uh, over time, when the economy is moving to its new long-run equilibrium, uh, what's happening? Along the transition path to the new long-run equilibrium, as the expected price level adjusts, the expected one, remember, the short-run aggregate supply curve will also adjust because producers will adjust their production plans accordingly. And so the aggregate, the short-run aggregate supply curve will shift to the left from AS1 to AS2. So now the economy is back at point C, which corresponds to the natural level of output Y1, and the price level will increase even more. We are at P3, which is way, way higher than when we started at P1. And... Uh, Part four, part D follows and says, what will, what will this change? How will this change in the price level affect the demand for money and the equilibrium interest rate? So once again, right here in the bottom left, we need to resort to a standard uh, money market graph. Uh, I have recreated the graph from part A, but now we know that the increase in the price level will cause an increase in the demand for money, right? Everything costs more. So people need more money to pay for the uh, for consumption and investment. So the demand for money increases from AD1 to MD1 to MD2, and the equilibrium interest rate will increase and go back to its to R1, which is the natural rate of interest. So what is happening here is that price level adjusts once again, equilibrium interest rate goes up, 
And this is what is actually causing the shift uh, of the uh, output to fall and go back to its long run uh, level. And finally, Party e asks, is this analysis consistent with the proposition that money has real effects in the short run, but it's neutral in the long run? So is the analysis considered with theory? Yes. We just illustrated how this works. We showed that while output initially rises because of the increase in aggregate demand, over time it will fall once the short run aggregate supply curve adjusts accordingly. So indeed there are short term, uh, money has real short term effects in real output, but over the long run money is neutral.